This snake fools everyone with its weird tail. For a long time, we thought everything was a deer line situation, a simple predator prey perspective, but that's just not how it goes. There are some super crazy animals in nature that attack or defend in extreme and rare ways. Take the hagfish, for example, who releases a bucket full of nasty slime to kill its enemies. Other than that, there are these bottlenose dolphins that are absolutely ruthless about their way of killing fish. And if you're scared of spiders and snakes, Holy shit! Get a load of this new snake species who turns birds into dinner with what looks like be a giant spider attached to the end of its tail. So buckle your seatbelts and subscribe to the channel to find out more. Scientists couldn't have chosen a better name for the archer fish. These little fishes have a superpower like no other. They can spit out strong jets of water into the air to attack flying insects with astonishing accuracy. It's not just insects that these water streams can bring down. Even small lizards that might be resting on the nearby foliage are not safe from these fish. They've even smart enough to alter the force of their jet to hit bigger targets. The University of Bayreuth in Germany trained about nine archer fish to spit water in front of a high-speed camera. When they found out is that their water jet stream had a specific way of functioning. The back of the water would be hit with so much accuracy that it caught up with the front and ensured that the force would concentrate all in one place. The archer fish do this by just changing the shape of their mouth. Stouts are tiny little creatures, but that doesn't mean their metabolism is also very small. With their frantic heartbeat and quick movements, these little beasts need at least five meals a day. They go around foraging even at night, thanks to their night vision. Sometimes they like to feast on something fancy, like rabbits. Even though they can tackle their prey ten times their own size, they do something much weirder to catch a rabbit. They start dancing manically in front of the rabbit as a way to hypnotize it. It darts and leaps right in front of the rabbit. Once they've captured the rabbit in a trance, they sneak up on it and attack right away. Well, it looks like they could win X Factor along with a delicious rabbit with those moves. Bottlenose dolphins are very cute creatures because all dolphins are friendly animals, but the way they hunt is absolutely cruel. One of their most famous tactics is to confuse their prey so much that they have no idea where to escape. To do that, they round them up and start swatting their tails on the sea floor. This makes all the sediment fly around in the water, creating a sort of mud net. Sometimes they use an even worse tactic called fish kicking. This technique has been observed by a lot of researchers. They straight smack or flip the fish with their tail flippers and kick them flying into the air. Then the dolphins swim over to the stunned fish and gobble them up like they weren't just playing with their food a second ago. Some researchers say that dolphins might have learned this from their own parents or other adults. Looks like even the adult dolphins are as playful as the younglings. It's not just dolphins that use the net method to catch some prey, it's also huge humpback whales that like to munch on krill and small fish. This method is called bubble net feeding, where they deliberately blow huge bubbles from their noses. This forces their poor food to become encircled, not a tight ball. Then the whales or whales swim together from the bottom to the top of the surface, engulfing everything in their way. We're not sure why the whales feed this way since they're big enough to hunt tiny prey without so much effort, but there was footage of about 33 humpback whales feeding at the same exact time, even though their prey isn't clear. The most surprising part is that the first time a super group of whales did this was back in 2011, which is very recent in the bigger picture. The secretary bird might look like a supermodel that belongs on the runway, but you'll forget how pretty it looks when you see how good a kicker it is. This bird stands over four feet tall on its crane-like legs. Unlike most birds, this one doesn't swoop down and catch its prey in its mouth. The secretary bird is seriously the snake's nemesis. Their method of killing snakes is just repetitive and strategic stomping. Not only are they physically different from other birds of prey, but their diet is also very different. Since they're the footballers of the family, they'll eat anything that's small enough to be chased. These kicks aren't the regular type either. Each blow they make takes about 15 milliseconds. That's about one-tenth of the time it takes to blink. This makes killing the snake's skull a very easy task and a very tasty meal. Chimpanzees are one of those animals like in natural diet. That means fruits and whatever plants they can find. However, there are times when food is scarce and there's no source of nutrition. They can turn to eating the brain meat of their close cousins, red colobus monkeys. 
Chimps like to prey on the younger monkeys too, infants, juveniles, and adolescents. That doesn't sound too bad as meat only makes about 2% of their diet, but when you find out that they crack open their skulls like coconuts, that's when things get gruesome. There are videos that show chimps hunting these little monkeys down to slurp their brains up like smoothies. Could be because the brain is the most nutritious part of the body. They're high in fat and long chain fatty acids, which boost neurological development. But do they really need to crack open their skulls like a huge gobstopper? They've been hunting the poor red Columbuses so much that their population had to face a huge decline. It could be because they're much easier to catch, especially when there are 20 chimps chasing one or two of them. Trapdoor spiders aren't the same as regular spiders. Sure, they have fangs and eight legs like them, but they're the type to live in webs. These live underground for most of their lives, in a burrow like a small rabbit. Sometimes they even make burrows near creeks or rivers so they can hunt little fish, but their preying style changes when it comes to other prey. Their trapdoor has a hinged door, which is way too advanced for a spider. They leave their trapdoor half open at night. This way, the prey falls right into the little hole. The spider then detects its prey through the vibrations, and when it's close enough, the spider jumps out and catches the prey in no time. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's right there, it's underneath. Aquatic snakes aren't that interesting for creatures. They have regular old hunting tricks like land snakes, but chase their prey by moving near them and then strike at once. But the tentacled snake has more of a patience approach. If you know anything about fish, you know that they have a defensive reflex known as the sea start. This lets the fish sense threat and then zip away whenever something tries to grab or bite it. Here is a part that's going to shock you. Tentacle snakes have already figured out how to avoid this C-shaped movement by positioning itself in such a way that the fish lands right in its mouth when it tries to run away. Can you imagine all this strategic placement is done in about 15 to 20 milliseconds? Oh my god. This jungle cat called Merge took the phrase, you are what you eat, a little too serious, imitates its prey species. This cat would create a very high-pitched squeal, which sounded more like a bad imitation of a little baby. But it was good enough to attract a bunch of adult tamarins feeding by. Cats are very physically strong, but this vocal manipulation shows that they're also considered the psychological effects of this technique. Even though this attempt was not successful, it doesn't mean that it's up there with the best tactics available to jungle cats. Uh, thank you. <laughs> We're on the short end of the stick, it's more about hiding and protecting yourself than fighting back. That's why caterpillars and pupae don't have any attacking skills. Instead, they're more well-equipped in camouflage, mimicry, poison, and anything that would make them unnoticeable or unbearable to be around. This caterpillar actually uses the image of a venomous snake to scare others away. When it's in its larva stage, it throws its body backwards, revealing a whole painting of yellow, white, and black on its body then sucks air in through the tiny holes of the sides of its body, which is then pumped to the front of the body, much like a balloon. When the segments are all inflated, the caterpillar looks eerily similar to a venomous snake with a diamond-shaped face and huge beady eyes. It's almost like Mother Nature spends hours painting this caterpillar that turns into a boring moth. There was a fashion show for tiny little insects, the Orchid Mantis would be the show stopper, but this isn't meant to blend in with the flower, it's to stand out. Orchid flowers use these colors to attract pollinators like bees and other tiny buzzing little insects. But these mantises use the same tactic to mislead the pollinators right into their mouth. Human eyes can sometimes ignore the fine detail which make picking out a camouflage mantis in an orchid plant a lot harder. However, bees don't actually see the world like that. They see things a little more magnified. That means colorful flowers seem more apparent to them, including the sneaky little mantis. Along with a hunt mechanism, it's also an anti-predator function, a paradox in one tiny insect. When we think of spiders, we usually think of insects, which is usually what they eat. But there's a huge group of spiders that live near water and much on fish, aquatic insects, small fish, and even frogs. These fishing spiders wait patiently near the water with their front legs resting on the surface of the water. As soon as something delicious moves around, they can detect the vibrations of the movements with their legs. When they're close enough, the spiders take out their fangs and bite right into the new meal. Sometimes these arachnids will go chasing after the insects on the surface of the water. These spiders are generalist predators, which means they'll eat literally anything. But sometimes they would go for something big and juicy like fish. For this, their mouths can pierce flesh pretty easily. Moreover, their jaws are packed with powerful neurotoxins. 
Without even trying, frog fishes already look like a very weird experiment done by nature, but their way of luring into prey is even creepier. They have a strange appendage, Quan, as a lure. It basically resembles a small clump of dangling worms. When it gets damaged, it can regenerate easily. The fish think they're the one praying, and when they're supposed to, worms look tasty enough. They swim right near the frogfish's mouth. When the prey, which is usually a crustacean or a fish, is near the frogfish, that's very little chance that it can get out alive. The frogfish then happily sucks the prey in its mouth by opening its huge mouth and pulling in the poor victim. Moreover, the frogfish have skin flaps and appendages like the algae they hide in. Some look like sponges with spots in their skin which help them stay hidden from their prey easily. They really are the masters of hunting. Hagfish might look like a simple forms of life, but they're very complex. Their shape is quite simple, but when they're in danger, instead of running away, they fight with slime. They're actually capable of producing an incredible amount of slime. When it combines with seawater, the slime becomes very lethal for other animals. The hagfish slime is made up of very tiny fibers that are made of proteins, making it unusually flexible too. When they're stuck in a sticky situation, they release an insane amount of slime and then tie themselves in a knot to work their way away from the predator. Luckily for the hagfish, their slime can clog the gills of suction feeding fish and practically suffocate them to death. These jawless pervertebrates are really good at escaping predatory situations. They're even dangerous to humans in some situations. They don't really bite, but they have little cartilage-like structures in their mouth that they grasp onto the victim and munch on them. If that wasn't scary enough, they've been recorded predating on sharks, the apex predator of the ocean. Sometimes, when even a snake isn't efficient at hunting, it turns to its arachnid friends for some inspiration. This very rare Iranian spider-tailed viper looks like it has a spider attached to its tail, but that was back in 1970 when only one specimen was found. When another one was found in 2006, researchers realized that this was a case of aggressive animal mimicry. The snake's tail evolved to resemble the prey of another organism. That's how this smart guy fools birds into coming close enough to become dinner. It's not just the shape of the tail either. It's also about how the colors contrast to match an actual spider. Even the movements, the direction of the movement matters, and it looks exactly like a spider. This species might look like it's leaving all work to its suedo puppet, but it's actually a very special example of evolution. And since there haven't been too many sightings of it, it's already labeled endangered. In short, if you're ever hiking in Iran, just be sure to look out for snakes, spiders, or snakes that look like they have spiders on their tails. All right, comment below if you've ever seen anything crazier in the animal world. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Forever Green, and we'll see you in the next one. A mantis shrimp is a four inch shrimp that prides itself in being among the strongest animals in the world. They take down their prey by use of clubs. Yes, you heard that right, clubs. Not golf clubs, but their arms, which are shaped like clubs. It only takes them a few minutes to punch the life out of their prey. Oh, it's gonna be crazy. Oh my God, where'd it go? The force of their punch is said to equivalent to a bullet shot from a 22 caliber gun. The punch is also executed at a speed of up to 50 miles per hour, which is enough to break the shells of clams and crabs. In the jungle, survival is only guaranteed to the fittest. It's either you eat or be eaten. If there is one insect that understands this rule more than any other, is the Epimus beetle. In fact, they use it to their advantage. Think of it as reverse psychology. During their larva stage, they're preyed on by frogs, but epimus beetles are way smarter than frogs. The epimus beetles are more successful in hunting frogs than the reverse. So how do they do it? An epimus beetle lures the frog to itself, and as expected, the frog falls for the trick and sticks out its sticky tongue to attack the larva. The epimus beetle then quickly dodges the tongue and instead attacks the frog with its double hooked claws. The beetle hangs on its prey and eats it alive. Green herons boast of being among the few birds that use tools. While most fish eating birds rely on their patience, speed, and filter beaks to catch fish, green herons use bait. Like true fishermen, you'll mostly find green herons at the edge of water bodies casting their baits. 
Even ornamental fish ponds are not safe from green herons. They will use anything from feathers to twigs to dead insects and even pieces of bread. What's even more astonishing is that their tactic actually works. Sometimes it works faster than that of your local fishermen. The baits that try to unknowingly are stricken by the green heron's dagger-like beak and swallowed whole. When need be, they do dive into deep waters to catch their prey. Electric eels live up to their name by simply being natural tasers. They have three pairs of abdominal organ that can produce electricity. The electric shocks produced can be as high as 600 volts. The powerful electric shocks are powerful enough to stun their prey and sometimes it's strong enough to incapacitate a large animal, long enough for it to start drowning. Lucky for us, electric eels are commonly found in the Amazon River. Electric eels stun their prey until they're numb enough to effortlessly pass through the mouth to stomach. They never have to deal with a fish trying to escape. Sometimes electric eels do not use electric shocks on their prey. Instead, they just swallow it very fast before the prey can realize what's going on. Other times, they produce their electric shock to reveal any hiding prey. We both know that no animal can stand still in the presence of electric shock. So, unfortunately for the fish, there's no hiding from the electric eels. Which animal amazed you the most? Leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.